what the freaking process for doing a duplex conversion and what kind of challenges can you expect in doing this so if you want to know those details then this video is for you Namaskar, Vanakam, Adabarse, what's up everyone? Hope you guys doing great. If you're new to this channel, welcome to my channel. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do so for an awesome content regarding real estate and uh, Windsor, you know, many other financial related stuff. But if you've been following me, you know what I'm gonna ask you. Hit that thumbs up button because if you don't, then YouTube doesn't like me. If YouTube doesn't like me, I cannot make more content. So do me a favor. And today I have a special guest for you, probably if you don't know him, you must know because especially if you are looking to invest in Windsor, then he's the guy who is running the Win City Investor Club, Mr. Savio and my good friend. So I'm super excited, Savio. First of all, thank you so much for your time here. I, I will do this. <laughs> Corona. <laughs> Thanks for having me back, Aditya. Yeah. So I'm really curious to know because I know we did the video a couple of months ago yeah. where when you're doing the renovations on this project right yeah so i want to know what kind of challenges you faced and actually how much did it cost can you go over tell us what maybe, challenges <laughs> look how beautiful it is <laughs> doesn't seem like there were challenges right <laughs> not That's true. true not true there's always but, challenges but before that actually you know who doesn't know about you who you are okay thank you. <laughs> yeah yeah so uh, i'm sadio as i think mentioned i run the wind city investors club here in windsor ontario you know we're just helping other investors like myself like aditya like you guys who are following this to get into the real estate investing game if you're a new beginner if you already have a couple of properties uh, and you want to know about the windsor market you want to know strategy you want to know finances you want to know where's the best place to invest you know that's what we try to do in the Winston investors club it's a really family knit community that we like to share and help each other out yeah right me myself i'm an investor primarily right um and i do legal second street conversions in south windsor that's my little niche market if you will and what that means is that basically we're taking in a single family home and we're changing the highest and best use of that home into a multi-family or in this case adding a secondary a legal secondary suite now you have dual income increasing the cash yeah right it's something that's happening in windsor right now it's just new to windsor unlike the rest of ontario i must yeah. admit it's coming here we're the first ones to do it so we're the first to market which means you're going to get the most amount of money <laughs> yeah <laughs> first duplex conversion guy <laughs> yeah yeah so okay before like you know we go into the challenges and all just to recap with uh, how much you purchased this property for and what was your cost to renovate this project yeah so quick numbers basically we got this at that time we are talking about basically six months ago didn't we? yeah right yeah. uh, a little more than six months i would say mm -hmm. november 2019 we bought this for 275. Mm -hmm. you and i know both know <laughs> that if we can find 10 more of these at that price i would buy all of them right yeah <laughs> so so 275 is low you know it was low then it is low yeah. now uh, that's what we paid uh for this house of course going conventional financing so we put 20 percent down mm -hmm. you know that's about if my math is right it's about 55 60 000 yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right uh to do the actual conversion uh with in coordination with the city and i have to i have to mention the city of windsor because really they are promoting this okay guys so if you don't know they are promoting adding secondary suites or secondary dwelling units to an existing property why do you think that's happening well there's a there's a housing shortage <laughs> yeah it's as simple as that it's a housing shortage in ontario in windsor people need good safe clean homes to live in right so the city is promoting that if you have something illegal you're doing it wrong man yeah there's no excuse for you right yeah so we did this we did this legally it costed us about 120 grand 120 grand just for renovations yeah so if you do the math you know 55 down 120 mm -hmm. uh, in renovations you're talking about total investment for about one hundred seventy-five thousand dollars. got it okay we're going through the refinance process right now mm -hmm. uh, just to finish up the story and the numbers i know and we're aiming for five hundred thousand. 
So, you know, we go again, conventional financing, we'll get 80% loan to value. Yep. That's 400, we pay off the first mortgage. You know, we are basically getting our down payment money back, we're getting mm -hmm. our renovation cost back, 100%, yep. plus we're getting about 25,000 to put in our pocket. Ooh, that's that, awesome. Yeah. And will it cash flow after refi? Absolutely, so at $500,000, this house will cash flow about $400 net cash flow. That's net, awesome. Net, yeah. So, um, how much is the rent for the upper unit and lower unit? So one of the challenges, <laughs> Okay. <laughs> one of the challenges, right? So when we were working on the lower unit, we actually uh, rented the upper. Okay. Okay. So the upper unit is getting 1500. Okay. Plus utilities. Okay. That's what they pay. Mm -hmm. And then we finished this, as you can see, it's beautiful. We put it out on Kijiji. It got leased in basically two days yeah. for 1500. <laughs> wow. So it's the same. The lower is the same as the upper. Now the challenge is that I'm thinking to myself, damn, I should have. <laughs> <laughs> put a higher rent on the top, right? I could have gone 16, 1700 maybe. Yeah, yeah. So maybe when there's a tenant turnover, that's what I'm And upper is like three bedroom, one bath. Upper right? is three bedroom, one yeah. bath. Lower is two bedroom, one bath. Yeah. And I'm getting the same amount of rents. It, and is it the same finish as upstairs? Uh, no, no, this is all new. This is all yeah, brand, yeah. brand new, right? So the upper we did, we did do the bathroom and the kitchen, mm -hmm. but the rest of the house is still, I don't say dated, but you know, it's, it was an existing family home. So. Yeah, so pretty much like you have two units, three bedroom, two bedroom, one bath, one bath. Uh, fully separated, like all the hydro and gas. Yes, yes sir. Yes, yeah, sir. so that's awesome. And you're getting 1500 Wow. Each, yeah. Uh, why do you think that you, you will be able to, like, uh, how did you came up 1500 Because I know the standard two bedroom is like 1200 or something. Well, so we are in South Windsor. Yeah. All right. You guys, yeah. That, I mean, you know. South that's Windsor. what I want to hear. That's yeah. what I want to hear. Yeah, yeah I, mean, <laughs> I mean, you know, South Windsor is probably one of the best neighborhoods in yeah. Windsor to invest in. It's really catered to the family, mm -hmm. right? Or the young couple who's just starting up, left their parents' house, they want a place of their own. This is the place to be. You know, we're surrounded yeah. by really, really good schools mm -hmm. in Ontario. So that's why these smaller new families, young families want to come in here so the kids are in school. We have, by the way, a lot of Asians buying our property, yeah. as you know, <laughs> <Milan Southern Turks. laughs> because of the schools. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, so we have people who are not Canadians or not permanent residents buying properties or, or renting only so their kids can go to the school yeah. and once they finish they're out of here right yeah so there's a lot of factors behind that and that's why i chose south windsor to do this because i know the tenant profile is is better mm. than anything else but if someone thinks that they want to do a duplex conversion in a you know below average neighborhood would you recommend doing in that area uh yes or no yes or no I, I, listen at the end of the day it's all about the numbers yeah if the numbers work you know there's no brainer right yeah. don't don't get emotional about it that's what i tell all my people who are investing with me or people who want to invest you mm -hmm. can't get emotional right it's a beautiful house but if i have to leave this tomorrow somebody offers me a price i'll leave it even though it took me <laughs> I love seven that. months to do it right <laughs> it doesn't matter it's about the numbers if the numbers yeah. work i would say go for it makes sense make 100 percent sense so now the real thing is What's the reality behind to make this project happen? <laughs> How does that look like? A lot of work, a lot of work and project management for sure. So uh, Aditya, you know, but for your, for your audience, those who don't know me, I can't even lift a hammer, right? Yeah. If, I, if I have to lift a hammer, you don't want to buy that house. That's for sure, right? So I subcontract everything, right? Yeah. My expertise is managing these guys. Mm -hmm. That's my expertise. That's why I bring the, the value, right? Yeah. The issue is that, okay, if those guys, when I talk about guys, I'm talking about HVAC guys, yeah. electricians, plumbers, framers, drywall guys, if they've not done a legal conversion, mm -hmm. a legal conversion, then they're not the right guy. Because a legal conversion, you have to go through certain toll gates, if yeah. you will, with the city, and you have to pass inspections and so on and so forth, yeah. that requires you to follow the OBC or the Ontario Building Code. Yeah. If they don't follow those, if they don't know about those in the first place, mm -hmm. that's where the challenges happen, and that's some of the things that I did face. So what are the some of things that, you know, someone looking, for example, like I, I, if I want to do this duplex conversion, yeah. what are the things that you face that are like really challenging that you didn't know from the get going that I couldn't learn from? Okay, good. Yeah, good question. Let me, let me think about that. I mean, I think it, it goes right up from the start, right? Your mm -hmm. architect. Your oh. architect is super important because the architect knows the building code. Okay. Theoretically, they should yeah. know the building code, right? So the, the, the person you choose to design this layout and design mm -hmm. the conversion is important because they'll tell you, do you really need egress windows? Yeah. Right? Or how many do you need? What are the size of those windows? 
why you need to lay it out this way mm -hmm. to optimize the, the code, not so much the flow, yeah. but the code, right? So the architect is super important. My, my architect is great. Mm -hmm. Having said that, even then we made a mistake. So mm -hmm. for example, I mean, if, if you walked around the house, yeah, I yeah. had these two huge, huge yeah. egress windows, right? Yeah. Later on, I realized after studying myself the code mm -hmm. that that was not required. How many was the requirement? One. one really? Extra one. one extra one, correct. Right? So it's a nice to have because it brings a lot of money yeah, yeah, yeah. into the house, right? So it's a nice to have definitely and it's comfort for the new, for the tenants who will eventually rent it. Yeah. But is it required by code? Not really. Right? You could so have saved some cost. I could have saved at least about, I would say about 7,000. Wow. You know, so my 120 would have dropped by about seven grand. Yeah. If I, if I didn't follow that, right? That's one one of the one of the challenges that I had. Um, so definitely, your architect is super super, super. important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I had a big issue with my plumber. So the first plumber I actually got to do the work, mm -hmm. quoted me, started the work, but I realized very quickly he's a retail plumber. He's a plumber that goes to a house to fix uh, a broken toilet oh, or okay. a, a leaky faucet. He's not a guy who can do a legal conversion, right? Unfortunately, I learned that too late. <laughs> so it delayed my project, I would say by a good four weeks, honestly, because the framer couldn't start doing mm -hmm. his work. The drywall, obviously you had yep. to be pushed back. Everything got pushed back because this clown wasn't doing what he was supposed to be doing, <laughs> right? So know your contractors, vet them, check them out with other investors. That's another tip I would, I yep. would definitely give. You know, I talk to guys who've done it and ask them, who do you use to do that work? You know? I love so, that. I love that because, you know, I, I remember, I know this is like totally unrelated point, but uh, when I bought my first property, I had a guy from KZZ. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I, I thought he did a good job. And one of my friends came to see me just for a, a weekend and yeah. he was like pointing all the issues. I'm like, oh, that guy didn't know what he did. <laughs> but you didn't know what you didn't know. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you got you now you know because you had that experience. Exactly. Right. So there's there's the difference between theory and actually doing. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And that's and that's the difference. So so yeah, I mean stuff like that. I think that's in any kind of renovation projects that you do. Mm -hmm. You know, managing the pro uh, the the, the sub trades or the contractors are super so important. If mm -hmm. you're not aggressive enough, if you're not on top of it, if you think they're going to come and do their job, well, you're not. Watching them, yeah, it's not gonna happen. Unfortunately, yeah, right. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be there, right? So, so yeah. So um, you know that, and then of course, in the middle of everything, we had this COVID issue. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> so now we have uh, our big box stores yeah. can't get supplies, and then labor shortage, so on and so forth. Touch wood. Luckily for for me, I think in in my calculation, we lost about three weeks. Which wow. is not too much. Yeah, I mean, but you know, so, exactly. So you know, we we, we have to. Just move so, on. Um, how is the process with the city? Like, are they quick, or you know, um, is there anything super that you quick. can? In my in my opinion, super quick. Uh, you know, when we started the project, we had a delay from the city only because at that time uh, they were under resourced. Oh, so okay. you know, and they and they made it very clear to me right off the start, saying that at that time last year I'm talking mm -hmm. about that they are in the process of hiring a lot of people. It's going to okay. get quicker. quicker. As as soon as the project started and mm -hmm. when you have to get inspections coming in, it's 24 hours. So oh, I wow. call them up and say, I need the inspection, 24 hours, you know, lead time, next day they're here basically. So yeah. uh, very, very supportive of the of the fact. You know, there's a lot of things that we had discussions with the with the inspectors. I had discussions mm -hmm. with the inspectors, right? And how to fix a problem that, that basically we didn't think about, right? Yeah. Whether it be the ceiling height mm -hmm. uh, above the stairs, for example, yeah. or um, the insulation requirements in the stairwell, right? And we had a very open discussion and he gave me suggestions how to do it. So it's important that you have that relationship. You are, yeah, yeah, have a good relation and ask them, right? Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. a lot of investors and this is, a, this is a note to all you guys listening out there. You have to ask the inspector, show me, show me in the book where it is, right? Because I know a lot of people are scared. They have this fear. Oh, he's an inspector. He knows what he's talking about. I got to believe what he says. Yeah. Oh, right? that's a good point, actually. But you can challenge these guys. They're human beings just like us, <laughs> right? Sometimes yeah. they need to go to the book and check to see the code themselves. And that's what we did. A lot of times I asked him, I said, where does it say in the book? I just need to learn for myself because yeah. I'm trying to learn the OBC, right? Yeah. The Ontario Building Code. And they were very open to that. And we went through the book and said, okay, here's the thing. Hmm. Oh, oh, by the way, actually, maybe you don't need this because there's a variance here, right? So yeah. that, that's the kind of discussion. So always challenge, not challenge in a bad way, but you know, yeah. question and, and try to learn. It's always a learning. Yeah, experience. maybe you can say like, I'm just curious to see, uh, you know, if I can find where, where where did you reference from, right? Exactly. Yeah, love that, love that. I, I think that's a that's a great point. Yeah. Um, so if you would have to do over again the same thing, what would you do differently? 
Oh, jeez, I would have bought, you know, five more <laughs> for 275. <laughs> That's the first thing I would have done. <laughs> Everyone says the same. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So, um, you know, I, I can say for sure, you know, in retrospect, mm -hmm. um, I could have saved a little more money on the project cost, but 120, you know, I, I give you an example of the windows. Yeah, yeah. Uh, another example is the kitchen cabinets. These kitchen mm -hmm. cabinets are from Ikea. Oh yeah. So it, it cost me uh, a total of five grand to for the material and to install. Yeah. I could have got a kitchen for maybe like two grand if I wanted to, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I could have gone a little bit down on the on the quality granite countertops and yeah, gone yeah. something else, right? Um, so I can make that 120. I would say about 100. 100. Right? Okay. Just by mm -hmm. doing learning now, different yeah. learnings, right? Um, where I can save money here and there. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I actually love that. Is there? Any other tips that you would give someone looking or trying to do something like this? Yeah. So listen, there's there's an easy way to do it and there's a hard way to do it, right? Mm -hmm. So the easy way is obviously hire guys like me <laughs> or Aditya or anybody, any other investor who's actually done it, right? And you pay for it and you get a turnkey kind of project management yep. or a product at the end of the day, right? But for those of you who want to learn to do it, there's you know that's that's a little bit of a harder way, mm -hmm. but I think it's something. Like going through this process, yeah. nobody can ever take away this knowledge from you. Again. Yeah, exactly. Right? Oh, that's actually great. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I, I'm the first guy to do it in South Windsor. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I don't know if you know Aditya, but we put on a course. I put on a course. Oh, yeah, yeah. Learning this, right? About uh, doing legal second suite conversions. Yeah. We have graduates from that course who are doing it now, and I'm on the phone with them. Wow, the graduates, I love that. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and they do it, and they're crushing it. They're crushing it, right? So those guys. They took the harder route, but they wanted to learn themselves because yeah. now they have that information and that knowledge. Nobody can ever take that away from yeah. them, right? So my my tip is that listen, you can learn theory and all that stuff, but mm -hmm. the best way to learn is actually do by it. doing. Yeah, right? yeah, so, I love that. But you know, I think that, that you you bring up a great point. So if you are really curious, I know this video will give you a quick Snapchat, but I personally would recommend learning the course. How much is your course fees? So the, the next one is, is four ninety nine. So four ninety nine, guys. It's literally like if you have to go to a university learn something that makes you hundred grand, you pay like ten thousand or twenty thousand. Yeah, four hundred. Uh, but again, that I'm just I'm not affiliated. By the way, I'm not getting anything from him. I just love that uh, course. You know that the way of learning. I'm a huge fan of. You know, always spend few hours in the beginning learning because that can save you a lot of time in the future. So if you're really curious, I personally would recommend checking out his course. Probably I'll, I'll put a um, yeah, definitely, definitely. link in yeah. the description. The next one is uh, July 11th to 12th. We're, we're just finalizing the dates that might change. Okay, July. Okay, so, so is it going to be like online? Yeah, so it's going to be online. So we do two things. Mm -hmm. So we do a theory because of course it's Ontario building code. You need to know, you know, what is the code say? What is the requirements? Yeah. But then also we do a virtual um, tour. Okay. So where me and my and the educator mm -hmm. uh, partner Ken Beckenham in this case, we actually go to a unit like this that is not finished that we are in oh, the okay. process of doing, mm -hmm. and then we actually have a live conference so you can ask questions while we are at the project site and say, okay, mm -hmm. what about the seating height? What about the you know the the spire separation, mm -hmm. the sound insulation, so on and so forth, right? Yeah. So uh, it's a bit of both, mm -hmm. and then the value, the true value of the clothes are now now. I don't mean to sell anything on your, on your, on your show, Aditya. But the, the true value of the course is the fact that you have Ken and me after while you do your project. Got so, it. you know, you pick up the phone and say, okay, Sabio, I'm having this problem. Yeah, because now they're they are friends with you, right? Like, exactly. of course. Now, that's awesome. I, I, I definitely would recommend someone uh, who is curious. Yeah. Savio, thank you so much, man. You're always like, you know, crashing man, in. I, I gotta thank you, man, because, you know, when I came to Windsor, you were the only guy, one of the few guys that I've seen here, young guy, much younger than me, by the way, <laughs> you know, who's actually doing shit in Windsor, right? Oh, thank you. And I was thinking to myself, where's my community, right? And now I do the Windsor Investors Club, but I wouldn't have done that if I didn't find guys like you and see guys like you who actually providing so much value to the community, right? And giving people what they should be doing and giving them the chance to have financial freedom. Yeah. So thank you for that. You know, no, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And it's a saying, right? The more you give, the more you get. Absolutely. So selfish reason. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> no, thank you so much guys for watching. If you have any questions, hop your questions in the comments below. I'll make sure pull the Savio's here and answer those questions. Have a wonderful day guys.